Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. Do you have a spot in your home that looks like this? I call it Mount Scrapmore. And it's just a fact of life. The more you sew, the more scraps you have. Well, I have some strategies to help keep it in check. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Well, the first step in managing your scraps is coming to terms with them. Scraps are just something you're gonna to have to deal with if you're going to sew. The basket is never gonna be empty, but if you're diligent, Mount Scrapmore can be kept under control so it doesn't overwhelm you in your sewing space. So with every problem, there's three ways of attacking it. Prevention, management, and elimination. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. The first step in managing your scraps is don't overbuy. If the pattern says buy three quarters of a yard, you buy three quarters of a yard. Don't be tempted to buy that extra quarter because chances are when you're finished with a, a pattern, you're finished with the fabric. You've done it, you've seen it, you don't wanna touch it again. And the less you have in your stash, the easier it will be to deal with. Your sewing room will thank you, your brain will thank you, and your wallet will thank you. You might be asking what an after quilt is. Well, way back when I first started quilting, I was doing a block of the month club. And by the time I finished putting together all the sampler blocks, I was so sick of the fabric. Like, I mean, I was just terribly sick of the fabric that I was determined that I was going to sew every single piece of that fabric that I had into a back so that I didn't have any pieces to go into my stash. I like the process so much that I now do it for every quilt and I call it an after quilt. And I challenge myself to use as many scraps as possible on the back. Sometimes it's an improv exercise, sometimes it's just a strip down the middle, sometimes I'm incorporating the extra blocks. By doing it this way, very little makes it to my orphan block pile or my scrap bucket. And if you're interested in a video about how to make an after quilt, please put it in the comments below. Now, similar to the after quilt challenge, you can also challenge yourself to make a pillow or a pillowcase with your scraps to match your quilt. There is a woman at my guild that makes a pillowcase for every quilt that she gives away. And it's actually the wrapping for the quilt, which I thought was very clever. So here we are at management. <laughs> now the best way to manage your scrap pile is to start with the end in mind. Have an end game. Know what blocks that you want to make so that you can make your scraps conform to what you need. I was recently at the Shipshawana Quilt Festival and this fabulous scrap quilt by quilter Elizabeth Fitzgerald stood out for me. There was over 7,000 pieces that the quilters needed of the same size consistently. So before you start cutting your scraps up, know what size pieces you're going to need for these blocks you're going to use. That way you have a quick and easy supply so that you can sit down either every day or once a week or once a month and make one, two, or a dozen. Don't sit down and expect to make a thousand and your quilt will be done. Scrap quilts are best grown organically from your stash as your scraps become available and sometimes they take one, two, three, five, even 10 years to make. And don't restrict yourself just to one block. Have two, three, four styles because you're not in the mood for the same block every time. Now I'm going to be making a video on all sorts of different scrap blocks you can make. So when I get that video made, I'm gonna post it up here. Standard cuts. Okay, so you may want to cut your scraps into some standard sizes. You don't necessarily have a block ready for them, but if and when a block presents itself, you want to be ready with some pre-cut strips. Some people cut them in strips, some people cut them in blocks, but whatever you do, keep it simple. Do what's best for you. You may have substantial space constraints, so you want something very simple to store. If you make a system that's too complicated, either you'll waste too much time keeping it organized or it'll be too complicated and you won't bother to keep it up. 
So choose two to four sets of strip sizes and just work with those. Don't bother sorting them by color, but if you really want to sort them, just choose something very simple like high value, medium value, and low value, or warm colors and dark colors and black and white. Don't get more complicated than that. I only do two and a half inch strips and five inch strips. Sometimes I cut them into blocks, sometimes I don't. I find this size very versatile. And I don't separate them by color until I need them. And I use these sizes a lot in I Spy quilts and baby quilts. But again, look at how keen you are to make scrap blocks and do what's best for you and your sewing room. When I trim up a quilt, all that excess backing on the back, those are nice long strips. They're often with the fabric or larger. And I immediately cut them into two and a half inch strips. I join them up on the diagonal. I roll them up and use them for binding on my next quilt. I have them all ready to go. Now, everything that I don't cut into strips, there's a lot of strip offcuts when we're making quilts, I put in this bag. I call it my improv bag. These are strips that I use for strip blocks. I use this, I use the irregular shapes for English paper piecing projects or applique. I just cut out these hexes so I have a stack of them always ready to go. Now this is my improv bucket. After me showing you this, you may think I need some intervention. I love small pieces. I'm just very miserly with, with my fabric and I don't like to throw anything out. And if it's small, I throw it in this bucket and I do improv strips. These are just free form blocks and I, I make them all the standard size. I haven't got a quilt yet. It takes a lot of tiny pieces to make a quilt, but one day I'll get there. I also use these pieces in postcards. These pieces that I use for postcards are never going to make any kind of sizable dent in my scrap pile, but they're fun and they're different from making a quilt and you get to use all those fancy stitches on your sewing machine. Okay, so the last part of dealing with your scraps is disposal. Now there's no law that says that you have to make scrap blocks. There's many of you I know that scraps give you hives or give you lots of anxiety. So put them in a bag and get rid of them. It's just that easy. Now there's lots of people that collect scraps and depending on your designer and the size of your scraps, they'll pay good money for them. Just find yourself a D-stash site and go for it. But even if you do not want to go with the hassle of evaluating them and charging for them, there's many of people that will just take them off your hands for the price of the postage. Or perhaps at your guild or somewhere, there's a new quilter that doesn't have much of a stash. They might like them. So I try once a month to process all these scraps. I put it on my calendar. I grab a cup of tea, turn on my timer for 16 minutes, and I just go. More often than not, I don't get to the bottom of the bucket, but as long as Mount Scrapmore isn't growing, I'm good with that. So now tell me what you do with your scraps to keep them organized. Please put them in the comments below. This is the first in my series of dealing with scraps. Next week, I'm going to have a video on easy scrap sampler blocks. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I make new videos. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Just Get It Done Quilts. So take care and I'll see you next time.